Dr. Vasudeva, if I now begin with you, a lot of students are going abroad for on vocational studies. I mean, if you look, I mean, a huge chunk, a majority of students, and we are not even talking about research or wanting to be scientists like we were discussing in the break, but they are just going in there to get that vocational study and come back and cash on it, get on with it. Is, are we lacking somewhere? Here? Yes, there may be, there should, there could possibly be more vocational institutes in here. Mm. There are plenty of vocational in institutes already in almost every state. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, what happens is parents think that if a child has not been able to do well in India, if we send him abroad, probably there is, he might come back okay. as a yeah. uh, trained person and get a good job. And moreover, there is uh, the attitude that when he comes back, he will come back with a stamp that he has studied abroad. Hmm. His marriage prospects, hmm. his uh, pro uh, livelihood, hmm. earning livelihood hmm. is increased. I mean, the prospects of earning livelihood are increased. And uh, still in this country, we prefer a person having a degree from abroad. I mean, uh, the degree from abroad is preferred hmm. over a dissimilar degree or the same equivalent degree mm -hmm. uh, in this country. Mm -hmm. MBA from abroad, certainly no matter which institute he comes from, is preferred over an MBA from a good university or a good institute in this country. Right. So, Fina, if you, you, have you thought about it that you will do better? I, I mean, do you plan to come back or do you plan to settle abroad? What is, your, what is on your no, mind? I, after I finish my course, which I'm doing, it's about a year more, I would want to do a certificate course in wedding planning. Mm -hmm. That's something I want to do, which so I wouldn't get in, in, in India anyways. Mm -hmm. so it's a short course and then I would want to come back because what I want to get into weddings, I cannot do it outside. Mm -hmm. and I think India is the best place to start with it. So, uh, yeah, I would come back. And over here you feel there's nothing that is actually supporting you with... Mm -hmm. So th there it is, it's a vocational course again and that's what a chunk of students are looking at and somehow, somewhere we are, we don't, we, we can't offer that. So what would be a solution Dr. Prat to things like this? Vocational courses, um, you know, um, many private institutions, private um, institutions have been set up, but mm -hmm. um, they are unfortunately not long term uh, sort of um, uh, institutions with a long term Mm -hmm. objective. Mm. They, they're trying to make a quick buck. So mm. they kind of raise these huge attractive looking buildings but pay very poorly mm. uh, when it comes to the teachers. Mm. You know, so obviously they will not get ah, good I teachers. mean when degree courses are so yeah. poor, so yeah. vocational yeah. would uh, yeah. take a further back seat. Yeah. I mean that's the yeah. way you would look at it. So pay them decently. Somehow, you know, the, I mean uh, in this country for the last 15-20 years we've been thinking government doesn't have the resources to do everything. Mm -hmm. So let private initiative come in. Come in right. But the private initiative has been very disappointing mm. uh, in the sense that there's, there's no real entrepreneurship in the mm. sense of putting in money, investing money, and building equity, if you like, mm -hmm. over a period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, people want to, you know, fly by op uh, night operators, operators who want yeah. to make a quick, quick buck. buck. Yeah. And that's where the malaise is. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think, uh, you know, if you look at um, uh, the best universities um, in the United States, mm -hmm. they're private universities, mm -hmm. you know. Some of uh, the best universities in other countries are also private universities. Yeah. But, you know, uh, Harvard is a Harvard, you know. <laughs> Uh, because they invested in becoming Harvard. They go on investing in becoming Harvard, mm -hmm. uh, remaining You Harvard. know, that, that's another very interesting point I wanted to ask. There are a lot of colleges mm -hmm. which at one point were very good. I'm talking mm -hmm. about government colleges, mm -hmm. like say government college for men. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Ludhiana was one of those very, very good, good colleges. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we have some sort of an audit mm -hmm. where you check that where have things and now it's nowhere on the scene? I mean, mm -hmm. where, how does it actually go wrong? Yes, Professor. Well, uh, how does it go wrong? Yeah, I mean, again, do, we have, do we actually again, check? Again, let me go back to the education is one area which requires, which can only be run well through self-regulation. Hmm. It's that self-regulation which has started becoming uh, lax. There is no self-regulation. Everybody, as uh, Professor Brar just pointed out, thinks in terms of a fly-by-night operation, makes money, and that's it. No, but the commitment required, yes. commitment towards education. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the schools the way they are. And let me also point out another thing. The examination system has been completely ruined. It's completely ruined. And the entire setup in the country is responsible for it. Whether it is schools, 
education boards, anybody. Let me give you a very concrete example. Some eight years back, one of the Minister of Technical Education called a meeting and I asked a very simple question that to whom does the Punjab School Education Board belong? Hmm. Government of Punjab, to whom does the Punjab Technical University belong? Government of Punjab, I said Punjab Technical uh, University de recto has not recognized the Punjab School Education Board. Hmm. He said how? I said when, you, when a child does his plus two, hmm. you ask him to take a common entrance test again hmm. for finding a seat in your engineering colleges, which hmm. means PTU, which is a government institution, Punjab School Education Board, which is a government institution, the two institutions don't recognize each other. Mm -hmm. You know, the Isn't state. Isn't it comical? Yes, but you know, the state actually doesn't have a policy, education policy in place. No, no, I'm not so talking of policy. I'm talking of <laughs> a simple thing. It's an extremely simple thing. Why do you ask a child to appear in an examination hmm. and then the answer given to me, oh, school education board, sometimes, <laughs> you know, they are not so. I said, if that is the case, hmm. which means, why don't you close the school education board? It's not serving the purpose. Hmm. Let me make another point on this issue of vocational uh, thing. Education, right. You see, when the system, we have tweaked our education system, particularly at the school level, in a mindless manner. We had a 10 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 right up to the post-graduation level, a 16-year system of education. We tweaked it. We said, no, it should be 8 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 and brought into higher secondary. And then the argument given at that time was that the higher secondary will have vocational courses so that right. af after plus one, plus one huh. pe I mean, people could go into some vocational things. That didn't happen. That didn't happen on the ground. Right? The another point is that I have been I have been raking my head to all those people in the school education. Why do you want a child to foreclose his options after ten? After his class ten, he is forced to decide he wants medical, non-medical, commerce, arts, and what happens at that stage of time? <laughs> that child has yet to mature into an adult. He is 15 or 16. Yeah. Dr. Vasudeva, uh, uh, Professor Devan has raised some very important points. A, we do not offer enough streams. We don't offer enough courses. That's another reason why students like her have to go abroad. You know, there's not enough choice here available. And then you, you just, whatever limited choice you get, then you try and get into uh, that. You see, I might sound, uh, I mean, uh, like uppish when I say, that uh, do students really need training in order to, for instance, wedding uh, uh, <laughs> planning? planning? <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe one does need uh, such courses, hmm. but as a mathematics student, I personally feel these courses have no value whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, they may bring a bring lot of money to the person who is doing it because she will be able to work for very rich people. Right. And those people will, you know, give any kind of money mm -hmm. she asked for, mm. but th she will have very few clients. Mm. And I'm not talking only of this kind of courses, similar courses which are being offered abroad mm. for which our students run yeah. because they think that they can come back right. and then cash yes. those courses yes. very yes. quickly. Yes. Why should one not apply one's mind to carry out studies which are more, uh, more relevant to our needs? I mean, do we really need a course in yeah. such vocations? Yes. We do need courses where we in industry where we can produce mechanical, uh, electrical, mm -hmm. and uh, various electronics. Hmm. Uh, I think that is a valid point. Yes, you do stuff which is relevant to. But very quickly before we, you know we have to close this debate. But Dr. Brad, before we uh, your final words, what would be an answer? Is it still a road to for students to go abroad? How does India now look at its institutions? We are a developing nation. We have now we have passed that uh, liberalization of mm -hmm. economy and things have opened up. Where do you see us in, in say 10 years down the line as far as education is concerned? There is a more fundamental point if you permit me. The point is there are two kinds of uh, things that are done in educational institutions. You know, there are people who can afford to pay to send their children to those courses which teach you how to make money. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, now this is one stream and I think it should be market driven. 
Okay. I don't think a publicly funded university should actually do business management. Mm. Okay. Mm. Because what does business men teach you? How to make money. money right. So if you if you have the money to send your children to go to a school which will teach you how to make money, then it's private sector enterprise. Right. You know, and I don't I'm, think I'm going to get the last words yeah. now from uh, Professor Dwan. Do, what, what do you see? Do you think students would still be going abroad? I mean, of course, it's a personal choice. Or are we going to be equipped enough to get better institutes here in India? Well, a lot of students who are of a very high caliber Hmm. would always plan to go abroad. You know, because why I am saying that? Because all the ones who go into IIT still go abroad. They do. I mean, that's the route. That's the route. Hmm. Uh, I just came across a couple of years back a term called need blind. Hmm. There are a large number of American universities where the admission process is not dependent on whether you, are a, whether you have the ability to pay for your education. They call it as need blind institutions. There are a large number of them yeah. if you look at some of mm -hmm. these uh, universities. So if you, if you get admission there, say, in, say in, a, in, a, in a place like Caltech or Princeton or some such place, and you have no resources to pay, the university takes on itself that where do they find the endowment to pay for your education. Yeah. Now this will be one category class people who would be going, going abroad, abroad. Okay. who will go abroad. But what about what about here in uh, in our own now, country? Now what you are, what I said is that uh, I don't disagree with either uh, uh, Dr. Vasudeva or Dr. Barad. You see, there are reasons are many, but one of the prime reasons that I know in my circle is a large number of students who moved down into Australia from Delhi because they could not find admission. Hmm. They could not find an admission in a reasonable or any college. So that, that's the whole point. Will and, and that is when they had scored more than 80 or 85 percent marks in plus two. Yeah. Now at my time, I think 80 percent marks <laughs> was the topper in the university. <laughs> is that it because of marks that you, is that, that's another criteria? Yeah, you have you to see, go abroad. Uh, the reason you 99.9 percent .9 is the cutoff. I know. In Stephens or somewhere. Yeah. So like if you, even if I you try any of the Delhi University uh, colleges, you can't because the cutoff is so in the 90s. So you might as well, so go, might as well go abroad. Because so after those colleges, even we create more institutes. No, no. After those colleges yeah. that we have in Delhi, which are again uh, mu much can be said about their improvement also. Mm. After those colleges, what are the colleges available? Yes, They're third rate. Right. Exactly. So I think, thank you so much for being with me this evening. And at the end, it's a society on the move. Aspirational exposure, all that is fine. But the one problem perhaps with the now well-established trends of youngsters going abroad to study is that education does not score high in the overall scheme of things. There are exceptions, of course, but this He's gone out, so will too. Tendency largely translates into students joining just any educational institution abroad simply for the foreign tag or a dream. And that's a warning sign. Well, that's all that we have in Prime Debate. Thank you for watching.